hi everyone we're just gonna wait for a few more minutes until everyone joins in Okay, I think we can start. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back for another week of Educational Neuroscience Seminar. Before I introduce our speaker today, I just wanted to quickly share an upcoming conference. Uh, so the INVEST, which stands for International Mind, Brain and Education Society, is running their 2024 conference in Leuven, Belgium from the 10th until the 12th of July. It is an educational neuroscience conference designed for both researchers and uh, educators. And just a quick reminder for the deadline. Um, the deadline for the early bird registration is 1st of May and the final registration closes on the 26th of June. And I believe almost all members, if not all members of the Center for Educational Neuroscience is going to be there. So if anyone is interested, you can find more information um, by scanning the QR code. So now without further ado, uh, I'm very pleased to welcome and introduce this week's speaker, Dr. Otilo Krojci, who is an associate professor at the Utrecht Lorand University in Hungary, as well as the lab director of Numberworks. His main area uh, of work lies in mathematical cognition and understanding how people understand numbers and maths. Otilo Zlam uh, also developed a statistical software called Cogstat that allows for automatic hypothesis test selection, as well as faster data analysis and APA style output. So today he is going to tell us more about place value structure of the Arabic number notation in a subgroup of people with dyscalculia. So now I'm going to hand over to Atila. Atila, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you, Stella, for, for the introduction. Stella, you, previously you mentioned you wanted to share some PowerPoint of yours which you didn't. Did you want to share it now or? Oh, I thought I did. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, you did. You did, Stella. Yeah, yeah, I can oh, see okay. it. Okay. I, I have no idea why I couldn't see that. Maybe because I have this multi-screen stuff. Okay, oh, sorry. Yeah, could be. So, okay. All right. So, so thanks, thanks very much. Thank you for for uh, this very nice invitation and, and this and this introduction. And I'm happy to be here. And I'm share now. I'm trying to share my screen. Um. Uh, oops. Sorry. Ho hopefully you can see my mouse yes, as we can. well and yeah. the red stuff again. So seemingly everything is yes. working well. And also I'd like to, okay, now some, some stuff disappeared. Um, I wanted to share the uh, link of my slides, but yeah, this is tricky. Some, some user interface stuff just disappeared. And I will not be able to to find it. If, okay, whatever. You, sorry, Attila, if you want, I could copy paste the link into the chat if that's okay. Um, yeah, that's what yeah. I wanted to Great. do, but I right now I cannot see the chat and I cannot see cannot see the user interface to turn on and off the, the chat because again because this multi screen arrangement and okay, so if you could do that that. That would be helpful. And a final note before I, I would I would I would start. I'm not sure what the uh, policy here is, but if you can switch on your camera, I appreciate that because you know otherwise I'm just talking to the screen and seeing myself and you know not having any feedback. Also, well, actually, I can see myself being very enthusiastic, which is good for my mood. But uh, so it's much more useful to to see other people. You know, if they are. They are bored or whatever. So uh, today I'd like to talk about um, uh, how place value notation is handled and that it 
seems to be impaired in developmental dyscalculia, or at least in some people with with living with uh, developmental dyscalculia. And why this could be the case? Well, the key is the executive function, or at least that's that's our uh, hypothesis. And uh, well, that's, that's that's the main message of my talk. And if you're still interested in the details, so first I'd like to talk about probably this will be familiar for many of you. Uh, the um, uh, different causes of of, of uh, developmental dyscalculia and like to highlight the role of executive functions. And then this will be probably more surprising. There are hardly any people investigating this, this specific issue at how sign value and place value notations are processed and uh, what, what kind of representation can support that. And, you know, this, these, these two areas or these two topics will lead us to our uh, main question here today, whether place value notation is impaired in, in, in dyscalculia. And our answer will be that, yes, it is. Uh, but I will still, I will talk about the methods, you know, how we are, we are using that. And this could be also useful because we, we propose that maybe this kind of task could be used as a diagnosis tool. It has quite some nice advantage or, or properties. And, um, and, uh, uh, so maybe that's 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 the main reason, you know, why it, it it would make sense to pay attention to the details of the design we are using here, and then I will I will get to some conclusions not only about our specific result here, but also about you know how diagnosis or compensation could be uh, uh, developed for uh, uh, dyscalculic people, and also some some more general uh, uh, conclusion about how domain general uh, impairment could lead to domain-specific uh, symptoms. So uh, the, the first part of the background, uh, probably this will be pretty familiar for most of you, is that, well, devel developmental dyscalculia, or, or it has a lot of terms, sometimes meant with different background motivation and so on. Basically, to say math-specific learning disability or, or, or learning problem or uh, impairment uh, without any other seeming issue. And uh, still there's there's a huge debate about uh, what could be the cause or whether it's a uh, uh, single issue or impairment, or maybe there are some subgroups. And here we'd like to like to argue, well, not we, but actually the literature usually argues that there are uh, different subtypes of, of uh, dyscalculia. And there are a lot of ideas uh, what could go wrong? And I will not get into the details, like you know how approximate number system, visual, spatial working memory, verbal working memory impairment, and some other impairments could lead to the symptoms that, that we, we can observe. Uh, but I'd like to focus here on executive functions. And this will be kind of a link between dyscalculia and place value notation handling. And the executive function, well, there are a lot of definitions and the large debate in the literature, what this is or what they are, these are, and how to measure them and so on, and what kind of subcomponents they have. But here we'll just simply refer to the, probably the most frequently uh, 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 cited uh, uh, paper in this topic, at least in numerical cognition. I, I think they are the most cited uh, um, uh, uh, authors which says that inhibition shifting between mental sets and updating information are critical components of executive functions. But actually, I will not stick to this kind of definition or subcomponents. I will, I will kind of handle uh, executive function in, in, in a bit broader way. And I will explain the computation, its computational role in place value notation. And kind of that will define how we, how we or what components we are interested in in executive functions, and there are a lot of lot of papers uh, uh, demonstrating that uh, the executive functions are are important in mathematical performance, and not only in in typically uh, developing participants, but also in uh, in dyscalculia. Also, there are some nice papers demonstrating that dyscalculic persons show some executive function. Uh, a, a deficit or impairment. And okay, that was maybe the uh, uh, 
this this is probably not so surprising. What will be more surprising and more hard, harder to understand is this sign volume and place volume notation. So let me just know that that you know when I'm talking to mathematicians or math teachers or IT specialists, they usually easily understand what I'm talking about and they are pretty surprised by our arguments and results. But when I, I'm talking to psychologists or cognitive scientists, quite often they don't really get the, the, the point, you know, why this is interesting or, 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 or surprising. So hopefully, hopefully today I will be a bit more successful. I'm trying to do my best. So let's first uh, clarify what this, this place value and sign value notations are. Uh, whenever we are, uh, no, we are writing or down uh, uh, numbers or when we are talking, we're using some specific notations and there are a lot of different kinds of notations. Place value and sign value notations are just two examples. Although when we are writing down numbers, probably these are the most frequently used uh, 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 notations. So place value notation is something like the Arabic numbers, what we are using in everyday uh, uh, work. And sign value notation is something like the Roman Roman numbers, and you know this part. What I'm I'm trying to explain here will look, maybe this will this will look trivial and boring. But I'm trying to do my best to to show you you know what what the tricky parts are, and why this is not trivial at all. So basically, when when we are we want to uh, denote a multi-power number. Multi-power number is that when you are we are using powers to denote uh, numbers in our decimal or ten-based systems, we are talking about ones, tens, hundreds, and so on. So when you have a number which includes several powers, actually, whenever you want to denote a single value, you have to specify two information, and one is is the power. What power you are talking about? Are you talking about ones, tens, hundreds, and so on. And the other critical uh, 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 information is that how many you have of those powers. So I have three ones, two tens, and five hundreds, or something like that. So whatever number notation you are using, you have to provide those information. And when you are using sign value notation or place value notation, you are using different ways to provide that information. So when you're, when you're let, let's just start with the place value notation because it's, it's more familiar for us because we are using that every day. So whenever we are talking about the power, we are using the position to denote the power. So depending on where a digit is, it will be about ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. And the symbols will specifically denote the number, the quantity of, of that power. Now, in, in, in a sign value notation, we are using the symbols for, for the power, and we are using the quantity of the symbols, so repeating the specific symbol uh, to denote the, uh, uh, the quantity of that power, if that makes sense. Now, you know, one critical thing or tricky thing here is, is that part. Sorry, it's, it's pretty hard to draw on the screen with the mouse. And um, so symbol here, uh, is denoting the quantity of the powers, but here in sign value notation, it denotes the power. So you know th these are completely different notational systems. That's that that is one critical point here. Now, uh, you know these actually these uh, uh, properties how different notations denote a specific value will define the notation. So a sign value notation is a sign value notation because it will denote a number like that and place value notation will be a place value notation because it will de denote or, or, or uh, uh, display uh, a number like that. Okay, uh, let me just skip this because this will not be especially uh, uh, spe uh, important for us. Now, uh, usually when you are reading math history papers or also most of the time cognitive psychology papers you will see that uh that usually it's written that that place value notation is so much superior it was such a bless for our culture that that indo-arabic numbers 
uh, were uh, 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 discovered, not discovered, developed, and it, it's so much nicer to have some calculations with place value notations. And there are some some typical arguments, you know, why this is the case. And let me just let me just mention uh, 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 two of them. So, for example, in Roman numbers. Uh, it, a, a quite frequent argument that it's pretty hard to use Roman numbers because of the subtraction. So the way we are denoting four is five minus one, actually one five, that is the way to write a number four in Roman numbers. And this makes arithmetic pretty difficult. Now the, the problem with this kind of argument is that th this is a late development in Roman notation. Actually Romans didn't use subtraction. So they denoted it four as, I, 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 so four ones. And this uh, subtraction was introduced in the medieval ages because they wanted to have nice clocks and wanted to have some symmetrical, you know, uh, 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 symmetrical digits and stuff like that. So, you know, Romans didn't use subtraction. It was kind of more regular, uh, the, the number system that they used. Or here's, here's uh, another argument, which is, I think, incorrect. So. Uh, can you name a famous Roman mathematician? Probably you can't. At, le at least me, I, I definitely I, I cannot. And you know, sometimes it's argued that you know because they were using such a crazy number notation system. No wonder that you know no one could come up with some fantastic mathematical discovery or, or you know scientific result. But how about the Greek, ancient Greek uh, mathematicians? You know, the problem is that, well, definitely you can you can name quite a few very famous uh, uh, Greek mathematicians. But the problem is that they didn't use uh, a place value notation either. Actually, what they used was something similar to 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 the number words we are using now. Not exactly, but it was it was not strictly place value or assign value notation, but a kind of mixture of that similarly, kind of similarly uh, uh, to our, our uh, uh, number words. So actually there are quite, quite a lot bad arguments why sign value notation could be wrong. And actually, if you're really looking at the, the, the historical and mathematical literature, there are quite a few examples demonstrating that calculation with Roman numbers is not so complex or sign value in general, in sign value notation, it's it's not so hard to make some calculation like adding up numbers or multiplying. The, the, the main reason why we think that it's really hard to do some multiplication with Roman numbers is because we are thinking about uh, we are thinking about it in a place value like fashion. But actually, if, if, if you don't want to multiply the numbers, but the digits, then sign value notation becomes quite easy to use. If you didn't understand my last sentence, it's not your fault. Uh, I should have explained quite a lot of details, but you know they are not really uh, uh, essential in, in, in my argument. I just want to say that in the literature, you will find some, some papers explaining some really simple uh, methods to use sign value notation to, to do some calculations. And to our knowledge, it well, for, for a long time, it was only us who, who tested this empirically. Now, I guess I could see Hanna here who are in, in Lapar University. They are, they are running some, some similar studies, but um, for a long time, it was only us who tried to test it, this idea empirically. So is sign value notation really hard to handle for humans, and to do this, we we design a pretty specific uh, 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 paradigm. So we didn't want to use the usual Arabic number or Roman number because you know we have so much experience with uh, Arabic numbers, and you you just can't stop people using some transfer knowledge or whatever. So we design new artificial number systems. We were using, first of all, we were using uh, new symbols, and these were symbols that are hardly known by our participants. So usually I'm Hungarian, and we did this study in Hungary, so usually Hungarians don't know those letters anymore. 
you know, my generation knew that, like, you know, Russian or serial uh, 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 characters, but, you know, the, our younger participants didn't know that. And the, uh, the meaning of the specific symbols were randomized across participants. And we used multi-power uh, notation, but we didn't use a base 10 notation. So we didn't use the decimal notation, but we used the base four notation. So we didn't use ones, tens, hundreds, but we used ones, fours, sixteens. And one main reason why to do that, well, uh, for, for a base four system, you don't have to learn so many digits. So it's more feasible for a short uh, uh, session. And second, we didn't want to have any transfer between Arabic numbers and place value notation or between Roman number and sign value notation. So that was, that was, it seemed to be, a, it, it was a good idea to, to have a base for number system. And we have created this artificial sign value notation and place value notation. So he, here are a few examples how to read them. So in this notation, if you're, if you're taking this example, what those symbols mean, uh, this was one, this was four. So this could be read as four, four, one, one, one. And you can imagine it like a Roman number. So you're adding up those values. And in our decimal Arabic notation form, this is 11. And this is another example, like six, uh, uh, 16, four, four, one, 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 which is 27. And that's it. Now in a place value notation, uh, you know, these but let's start with this example. It's a bit easier. So this guy means two and this guy means three. So it's like 23, you would say in your decimal system. But actually, because it's a base four system, you have to multiply the first two by four and the second three by one. So the meaning is 11. Actually, they are the same number and they are the same number here. So saying that we have one, four, sixteens, two, fours, and three ones. Okay. And the, the participants had to compare numbers. So they, they either could see two sign value notation number and they had to tell which one is larger or two place value notation and they had to say which one is larger. And also we had some additional addition tasks. So they could see an addition with two possible results and they had to choose the right, uh, the correct result. One of them was the correct result, another was uh, the incorrect. And Checking uh, error rate reaction time, we could see that sign value notation is always easier. Again, in a comparison task and in, in an addition task. We don't know about you know raising to power and more complicated things. Maybe place value has some advantage there. But if you're just considering simple tasks like comparison and addition, place value not <coughs> sorry, place value notation is much easier. Uh, to uh, to handle than place value notation. Actually, we replicated this with kids as well. So uh, probably six years old kids uh, 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 could solve this this task as well, and and uh, they could they could handle sign value notation easier. And you know, you you may think that okay, this is this is. This is a too complicated task. Actually, it's not. So usually it takes only a few minutes for our participants to learn the notation and then they could start using that. Now, the, the question is, okay, why is sign value notation easier than place value notation? You know, previously in, in, in that slide, I, I, I tried to argue that there are some theoretical and, 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 and uh, computational or calculational arguments saying that sign value notation could be easier actually. Uh, but psychologically, you know, that, that's a different thing because we are not calculators because we are using our, our uh, uh, tools, what we have in our head. And our idea is that we hypothesize that we are using, we rely on a natural multi-power number representation, or sometimes we term it item and group based number representation. And we we propose that whenever, at least initially, when we when we imagine multi-power numbers, we are imagining that as items and groups of items and super groups of items and mega groups of items and Google groups of items, or I don't know what, 
what, what the larger thing could be. So basically, we are imagining like ones could be apples and tens could be baskets of apples and hundreds could be as as sacks of apples and so on. And in that representation, whenever you have to denote the power and the quantity of power, you kind of have to imagine that as object types, items, groups, supergroups, and so on, and the quantity of those objects. And the idea was that whenever you can see a sign value notation or you can see a place value notation, you have to transform the power and quantity information to your representation, okay? And our idea was that sign value notation is pretty similar. So symbols should be similar to this to this uh, assumed representation. So symbol is pretty, pretty, well, it's not similar to object type. You know, a symbol is not similar to Apple, but actually we have language and, and the symbolic abilities. So we are, we are pretty good uh, attaching uh, symbols to things or labels to things. So this this is pretty easy for humans. And you know, quantity of the symbols are denoted the very same way. So this could be this should be trivial. On the other hand, you know, the position should be uh, uh, translated to object types, and symbols should be uh, uh, translated to 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 quantities. And this kind of translation is not trivial. And you know, we we tend to forget how play, how crazy place value notation is. So here is a quick demonstration just to have the impression, you know, how crazy a place value notation is. Just imagine that we will denote numbers with fruits. So I will say that, and this will not be this multi-power uh, number, rep natural multi-power number representation, but this will be a place value-like number rep representation. So let's assume that one is a strawberry and two is plum, and three is orange, and so on. And whenever I put this strawberry here, it means one. And I'm if I'm moving this strawberry here, it means 10. If I'm moving this strawberry here, it means 100. You know, this is crazy. And because we are using place value notation all the time, we tend to forget that actually place value notation is pretty weird, okay? And uh, so basically, th this is our our, our, our starting point you know why place value notation could be difficult and i will not you know tell you the details here but we were considering a lot of other available accounts or or models that try to account for multi-power representation but actually none of them can account for a sign value advantage effect okay i will not get into the deta details but the point is that so far it is only our model that that seems to explain you know why sign value notation is easier than place value notation all right uh now a final note for this for this long introduction is that you know i i told you and getting back to the previous slide i told you that translating this information to the assumed representation could be more difficult than translating or transforming this information here. And our and if if you consider you know why this is this is complicated, because you are kind of changing the dimension. So you're you are you are you're, you're uh, transforming position to object type and symbol to quantity, which is not trivial. And also you know it would be it would be pretty trivial to to transform uh, uh, the quantity to quantity, which you don't have. And it would be quite natural for us to assume that the label is about an object, but actually it is not. So you, you, you shouldn't kind of transform this information here, but you have to inhibit that. And changing the dimensions and inhibiting uh, some information is really what executive functions can do. So our our argument is that Another reason why place value notation is hard because this more complex or m more difficult transformation of place value notation to our assumed representation requires executive functions, okay? More executive functions. And you don't need 
uh, so much executive function uh, 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 use when you are using sign value notation. And this will lead us to our, our main question. So if place value notation requires executive function and maybe executive functions are impaired in this cochlea, then maybe if, if we are connecting those two things, then maybe discoclic persons could be in, impaired with place value uh, uh, notation. And that's exactly what we uh, what we tested here. And if you're checking the literature, you know, there are a, quite a few few works saying, okay, this this meant to be you know a, a, a horizontal line. Uh, I, I didn't want to cross Daniel's work and and so others. Uh, and um, so there are quite a few works demonstrating that multi-power Arabic uh, 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 number processing could be impaired and in 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 uh, this Now it's important that for our reason, this is not decisive. And here's the here, here's why. Uh, if you are using Arabic numbers, there could be at least two reasons why you have difficulty with multi-power or multi-digit numbers. One is that maybe multi-power handling is impaired in general. So it's hard for you to handle tens or hundreds, even in your in your uh, uh, um, assumed representation. Okay, whatever representation you're using, maybe it's just hard to handle them. And another reason is that maybe it's hard to transform the place value notation, which is which is Arabic notation, to this to this uh, uh, number representation. So you know, possibly you have two issues there. But if we are checking place value and sign value notation uh, at the same time, then if you have problem with with uh, multi power notation, then both of them should be impaired. But if it's only the place value notation transformation, what is what has some issues, then only place value notation should be impaired and sign value notation should be intact. So that's why our question is kind of more specific. And it's also it's important to highlight that we are not checking executive functions here specifically. Uh, we are just assuming that it is the mediator. But uh, uh, you know, after now we see that that uh, place value notation is impaired in this cochlea, and now we are running some follow up study. But the main reason why we didn't didn't check executive functions here because there are a lot of debates in in, in the literature. What is what, what are executive functions? How to measure them? How to measure them reliably? You know, in a regression regressional or correlational study, this could be critical because if your reliability is low, then your absurd correlation will be zero, even if there are some true correlations. So you will not be observed that because of the, the noise which will cover uh, uh, your true correlation. So you know this, this is pretty pretty tricky how to how to measure them. And many of you I know that 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 you know that. And we didn't want to kind of experimenting with executive function measurement with a kind of expensive. Uh, sample these participants, which are hard to uh, invite for 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 our uh, uh, studies. All right, so a few details about uh, our sample and the methods. Uh, first of all, we had a qualitative pilot session that was very interesting. So we invited two two discovery persons to our labs. They were university students, and. You know, in a similar way, the way we are using these notation in our in our studies, I just explained. I re very vividly. I, I remember the, the first part of the sponsor. So I, I I explained her. You know how sign value notation is used and what those symbols are and how we combine them. She could follow that. I presented some comparison task and she was okay with that. But then when we turn to the place value notation. And okay, she could learn the symbols because you know, learning symbols in themselves is, is, is the same task in, in both notations. But when I introduced the, the kind of the logic of the place value notation and I introduced a few examples, I, I, I could see how she was absolutely lost. She said that I have no idea what you're talking about. It's like, you know, the first time when you were he hearing about hypothesis test or something like that, some some complicated thing that could be difficult for a psychologist. And and you know this 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 uh person she just didn't get the point. And you know I, I've spent quite a few time 
trying to understand, trying to explain this in different ways, and it was just impossible. And we could see the very same thing with, with our other uh, uh, um, uh, pilot participant. So the point is that our pilot session demonstrated that this effect could be huge. So for that reason, we, we were initially we were using just a very small sample, as you could see here. But actually, this, this small sample is still enough to demonstrate the difference because the effect is so huge. And they were young participants and uh, they had normal, uh, their IQ was uh, in normal range, both the dyscalculic uh, group and the control group, and none of them uh, uh, could be categorized as, as, as persons living with ADHD. And uh, so we used the very same artificial number system that I have shown you in the previous example. We were using the same, practically the same uh, paradigm. And the, the, the study has three stages. First, we are teaching the symbols. So we are saying, okay, you can see something like that. This means, well, that was randomized for one person. That, that means one. And we are just showing some similar uh, symbol pairs. Then they are practicing that so they could see the new symbol and a number, an Arabic number, and they have to tell whether they are the same or not. And then we are teaching the multi-power notation, so how those digits are combined. And both, all, all uh, participants uh, learn both the sign value and the place value uh, uh, notation. Uh, the, the order of the notation was counterbalanced. And we are providing some practice trials uh, there are some tricks here. Sorry, I will just skip this because I have a bit more than 10 minutes left. So I will just skip a few details. And um, and if they don't understand those example uh, comparisons, we are explaining the rules again. And finally, we have the main comparison test where they could see different kind of comparisons within, in different conditions. I will be. I will talk a bit about uh, uh, the conditions in, in 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 the next slide. But the point is that basically we are we are checking you know the performance here, okay? And actually we were using different conditions. And I'm sorry, I will not explain those details because they are not really essential. They they are useful details if you are interested in in the finer details but basically we couldn't see you know some dissociation between between those uh conditions so at the moment here in this presentation i will, I will just skip this part okay why why these are important maybe i will refer to that very briefly but i will not explain the the, the fine details of that and we analyzed only the error rates because uh for a lot of uh, dyscalculic participants, the performance was basically random, random guessing. So basically, you know, they didn't understand most of the place value uh, notation. And in those cases, it wouldn't make sense to, to analyze uh, reaction time. And regarding the results, so in, in the first phase, when they are just using the single digits, there are no difference between dyscalculic and control group, and there are no difference between sign value and place value. It makes sense because, you know, both in sign value and place value, we are just showing single digits and it's the same task. Now, in, in, in the second phase, when we are teaching the notation and we are showing practice uh, uh, trials and explaining over and over uh, the rules, if they don't understand, we could see the very same kind of mistakes, both in, in dyscalculic and in and, and, um, the control group. So here is one example. You know what is a typical error in a place value notation? It's pretty typical, or, or or quite often we can see that participants are adding up the values. So it's like uh, comparing seventeen and twenty two, uh, and twenty two is larger. But if you just add up the digits, this is twenty seven. Oh, sorry, seventeen. Uh, so the sum of the digits is eight. And here for 22, the sum of them is four. 
So you may assume that this is larger because the sum of the values is larger. So this is incorrect, obviously, in a, in a place and notation. But when people are learning this new notation, it's quite often that they are making this kind of mistake. And that was typical for, for this calculic person as well. We couldn't see qualitative difference between the two groups here. Now, what is really interesting is, is, is this chart on the left. So here you can see the sign value notation and place value notations. Blue guys are the control groups and red guys are, are the discoculic group. And this is the error rate here. And what you can see that, you know, for the, for the control group, uh, both notations are similarly easy. Actually, this should be a bit harder. We couldn't see that here. We could see the difference here uh, in, in previous studies. And also we could see uh, that place of notation is harder also for the control group in reaction time, checking the reaction time. But again, you know, usually we, we didn't check reaction time because uh, for, for this group, it wouldn't really make sense. And here, the sign value notation is for this participant is similar to the control group. What is really difficult is the place value notation for this persons. And also, you may know that here are the individual participants. Some of them are really like the control group. They don't have any kind of difficulty compared to the control group. And some of them are performing on, on random guessing. You may say that, okay, this is 30% uh, 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 error rate, which is not random guessing, usually if you have two choices. But actually in those comparisons, there were comparisons where if you're following some incorrect strategy, still you could get to the, to the correct response, okay? For that reason, the random guessing is not 50% here, but lower depending on some specific uh, uh, a condition, okay? But basically, so these guys are random guessers. They 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 didn't get the the uh, place value notation at all. And these five on the right, these five uh, uh, conditions are the same thing as these five conditions. And as I told you, I'm not explaining the details. Mostly, I'm not explaining the details because here, for all five conditions, basically you can see the very same pattern here. Okay. And I will not explain this next slide. Okay, I will just summarize it very briefly. If you're interested in the in, in, in the in the finer details, I, I can send you the manuscript. Hopefully that will be accepted very soon. Uh, but the, the basic point is that if you are getting back here, maybe it's possible that for, for a control group, the place value notation is a bit harder than for the, than, than the sign value notation. So maybe let me just clear this. So maybe the, 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 the population difference is something like that, okay? And let's assume that these calculic persons have some general impairment. So everything proportionally gets harder, okay? And it would mean that, okay, this will be impaired a bit and this will be impaired a bit more because it's originally uh, uh, a bit harder. So proportionally, everything gets harder. And for this for this reason, the slope will be higher. And if the slope is higher, then the ANOVA interaction will be significant. So maybe this is not a specific impairment of the place value notation, but it's just a proportional, uh, proportional impairment, okay? And that's what we checked here. So we actually compared easy place value and hard sign value comparisons, which I'm getting back here, uh, the control group has equal difficulty in those conditions. So if we can see that kind of impairment here, this couldn't be uh, a, uh, a a sign of a proportional uh, impairment. If you didn't completely understand this, this, this last explanation or detail, don't worry about it. We were just double checking to exclude some alternative uh, interpretation of our result. But still with this uh, with this kind of double checking, our conclusion is that I will have four conclusion slides. We have a lot of conclusions. So our, our conclusion is that that placement notation uh, specifically impaired uh, in, in, in this calculia. And uh, 
And again, you know, there are some previous studies showing that multipower aerobic numbers handling are impaired in this cochlea. But our point is that we have measured more specifically, but that that this is about handling the place value notation, not more generally the multipower um, handling. And it, it is it is quite amazing or or interest or important to think about that you know if you have an impairment in such an elementary step in math like understanding the numbers they are writing to you obviously only this issue will lead to a lot of problems when you know teachers and and, and textbooks are using this notation all the time and because we could see that some participants were uh, uh, performing on random guessing level, and some some of them, uh, some of the discoholic participants, uh, were performing on the control level. This is this is in line with the idea that that probably there are some subtypes of of uh, of discoholic, and one subtype could be this place value notation impairment thing. Now the question is, what is what is the place value notation impairment? Sorry, I will skip this, and I will get back to this to this slide very soon. Uh, so, so we argue that that this could be the executive functions, and you know it's important that we haven't really measured this in this study. We haven't measured executive functions uh, uh, here, but actually the the, the only kind of uh, theories or accounts that can explain for the place value uh, 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 difficulty, the place value handling difficulty in general. Are, are, are only the the uh, theories that we have proposed here, and we so it's it's reasonable. Our, our our proposal is reasonable, and we don't we are not aware of any alternative explanation. So that's why we think that executive function and this special representation are the the best candidates uh, for these findings. But again, we haven't empirically tested yet. Actually, we are we, we are running some follow up studies. So Hana, who, who you can you can see her. Uh, okay, not the Loughborough Hanna, but the Budapest Hanna. Uh, you, you can see uh, on, on the video she she's uh, having a um, follow up study. Actually, in these days, we are checking the direct relation of executive functions and uh, place value notation in in typically developing uh, uh, participants, and we don't know yet the the result. Now, I'm getting back to the previous slide. Uh, so, you know, th these these results are not only interesting in terms of models or theories but you know they have some uh clinical or applied implication one of them is that uh it's it's amazing that this artificial number place value notation was really a new task for all of our participants we cannot see that there is some kind of transfer from previous tasks. So you know, this could be a kind of objective task where previous experience will not influence your performance. So for this reason, this could be a candidate for a diagnosis tool if we can kind of shorten or simplify uh, the task. Uh, anyway, th these are not really long or very complicated tasks. So our whole session is less than one hour. And if you still optimize things and we're, you're just focusing on place value notation, you know, this could be a 10, 15 minutes test, which is a reasonable length for, for diagnosis tools. And also maybe sign value, if sign value can be uh, handled correctly by discoholic people or, or, you know, or by this subgroup who has problem with place value uh, notation, then maybe sign value notation could be used as a uh, tool to teach more complex uh, concepts first, and when they understand those concepts, then we can introduce, you know, the place value notation version of that. Or also, this could be used as a compensatory uh, mechanism, like you know, creating sign value notation calculator. Technically, this should be trivial on on a mobile phone or or, or, or something like that. Now I'm turning to uh, my last fourth conclusion slide and I will have a summary slide with the, with the main messages and you know, it's it's pretty interesting that executive functions are domain general uh, mechanisms or, or functions and still they can lead to uh, 
lead to domain specific symptoms. And our, our point here is that whenever you have a domain general mechanism, it may have domain general path and domain specific path. So for example, in the case of executive function, domain general path is something that will influence anything. Like, you know, if, if you have bad functioning uh, 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 executive functions, then it will be hard for you to pay attention to anything that you are said in school. Okay, and uh, and this is this is a kind of jo domain general uh, mechanism. But on the other hand, there are some domain specific paths where executive function can specifically impair number magnitude processing, number transcoding, or choosing or excluding the irrelevant details in word problems. And as we could see, handling place value notation, or at least that's our our best guess here for 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 our for our result. And this is interesting because it says that even if executive functions are the main general mechanism, still there are some paths when they can lead to uh, domain specific problems or symptoms. Okay, and maybe this could this could explain you know why, uh, for example, dyscalculia could be over could overlap with some other problems like ADHD, but still they have some specific symptoms as well. So, you know, this, this, these kind of domain general and domain specific paths are maybe partly responsible for, for uh, these differences. Okay, now this is my really my last slide and, and these are my the, the main points uh, I'd like you to remember. So one of them is that place value notation is really hard to handle and harder than, than, than handling sign value notation. This is really against the kind of common sense uh, proposal in the literature, and it is backed by uh, computational and empirical um, um, uh, arguments and evidence as well. Uh, also, it's important to know that, that at least in simple tasks. So for very complicated math, place value notation could be more efficient. But for, for the very basics, what we are meeting, I don't know, with, with in, in, in primary school, maybe sign value notation could be, could be enough. And in our in, in this study of ours, we, we could see that some persons with with dyscalculia have serious issue uh, with handling place value notation. And our our hypothesis that this could be mediated with with an impairment in in executive function. This is something that we would want to check later. And these findings could be relevant for for practical or clinical work, creating new uh, diagnosis potential diagnosis tools or or uh, um, training uh, materials and so on. And a final note is about the domain general and domain specific paths of a domain general mechanism or, or module or, or, or ability. So thank you very much for your uh, attention. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Attila, for this fantastic presentation. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, we ha still have some time. So uh, you can either put it in the chat or uh, please just unmute yourself. And I still can't see the chat. Sorry, I will I will stop sharing and maybe maybe that will solve my problem. Yeah, Caroline, please go ahead. Okay, Hi, yeah, I, I can't see myself either. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, I can. Um, now my question really is, do you think that the main problem with the um, the place value is that it's very abstract, it's, whereas you can't actually see what you're doing. It's very much an abstract thing. Um, and I have taught a lot of children with dyscalculia and using, I don't know if you know what um, base 10 is, it's sort of um, single cubes for ones and then long, sorry, my husband's not calling, I'll turn you off. Um, and it's long rods of 10 for 10s. And when they can actually see what it looks like and how the 10 is made up of the ones, that seems to help enormously. I don't know if you've had experience of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with your comment. And, and you know, that, that's another way to, so that, that's rephrasing my idea that this is, this is, this is an issue of abstraction. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I really think that this is, this is one, one of the key issues. 
Also, you know, when when you you are using multi-power numbers, there's another issue when uh, so preschoolers don't really understand how a lot of ones will become ten. They have some issue with this. I don't know what what the English term is. Uh, uh, so when when you are kind of exchanging ten ones for a ten. Uh, seemingly, they 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 don't understand this, and that's another related thing, but not related to the place value notation, but you know, for related to multi-power thing. But but basically, if if we're talking about specific with the place value notation, I absolutely agree that this is a kind of abstraction issue. I'm just I just try to be kind of more specific what what kind of abstraction issue it is. So that's why we have this uh, item and group based number representation, uh, I mean, uh, 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 a mentor representation. And that's why we were talking about executive functions, but otherwise, yeah, this is this is a kind of a abstraction yeah. issue. But it, it might be that some people are just better at picking up on abstract things than others. Like, I mean, it'd be quite interesting to look and see if a certain subgroup of people were not good at linking things together, like, saying don't jump down the stairs and they don't understand why you shouldn't jump down the stairs whereas others will realize if you jump down the stairs you might fall and hurt yourself it'd be interesting to see if the if the people who could link things better were better at it than people who couldn't link things um yes and no and so 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 i i can easily imagine that at least in some cases this is this is this is what's happening and also when we are talking about abstraction and understanding complex things like ma like mathematical concepts there are some uh some other components that are not only abstraction but some other things like you know joanne and, and others are, are are discussing similar things i i think yeah this, this this story is not over yet but my my point is that kind of this this uh uh this is partly a kind of abstraction and understanding complex concepts. And I'm pretty sure that there must be some other, other representation and details of that, which do not belong to our examples uh, with, with this place value uh, uh, issue. If that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> We have someone in the chat. We have Nikki in the chat saying uh, using 1P and 10P coins may work. And they go to the bank when they get to 10P. Okay, yeah. Actually, well, we, we had we had some, some studies like 10 years ago. We never published that. And I'm telling the secret result. Uh, actually, like, you know, five, five years old? I don't understand this concept. So that's amazing because you know they still can can uh, subtract. So we were playing that. Okay, you have every time when 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 you behave very nicely, you will get a I don't know red score or something like that in the, that's the Hungarian system. And if you have five of them, you will get a sticker. And we asked the children to to uh, uh, to be the teacher and provide the stickers. And when you know, we were bringing them two. They understood that, okay, you will not get a sticker. For four, you don't get a sticker. For five, you get a sticker. For six, they were utterly confused. So, you know, our, our conclusion is that 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 having business with kids is really a nice thing because you can cheat cheat uh, when you are doing this because they don't really understand, you know, these uh, these trading things and 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 switching between uh, higher groups and and lower groups so my idea is that uh this this having these uh, this money exchange or something like that that could work for older kids and not for younger kids but that's another you know component uh otherwise you know for for older children or or for example adults with with um uh dyscalculia yes using the object themselves instead of having any kind of uh, abstract notation could be could be a rice first step. Actually, this, you know there are quite a lot of studies showing that this is really useful for for school children, and I agree that this should this should work. Uh, 
so yeah, this this could be a first step. But our, our, our kind of proposal that as a second step, if you want to use some abstract number notation, maybe you should use a sign value notation to make things easier because place value notation is is just crazy. Uh, I'm 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 reading. Yes. So Irene asks, thank you, thank you, Attila. Have you tried or are you thinking of testing some of these phenomena using Aztec numbers, a base twenty uh, system? Definitely no, and we will never do this for 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 two main reasons. Aztec numbers are absolutely place value notations, and they are they are twenty based numbers. Although the digits up to twenty are composed as a sign value notation, so it's it's pretty interesting. Basically, there are there are place value notations, but their digit can be considered as a mini number notation in a sign value notation. And one one reason why we wouldn't want to use it because you know twenty based system is just too complex and difficult and when you want to check a lot of phenomena then you have to use huge numbers and this could be very complicated and we are much happier with uh with the base four system and the other one is that as i told you it's not a pure sign value or pure place value system but it's a mixture of place value and sign value system in a very tricky way and whenever you will see some some results it will be hard to interpret because it's not a pure this system or that system. So that's 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 the main reason why we wouldn't want to want to use it. But if you have some specific idea in you know, why why Aztec uh, numbers could be interesting or useful, I'm 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 happy to hear further ideas. And uh, I'm reading the, the, the last one. Can you discuss the possible visual spatial uh, relationships as source of the problem? Uh, uh, there, okay, uh, it is true that in place value notation, the position, so the spatial information is critical. If you do not consider the spatial information, then you will not be able to solve the problem or, or, or understand the numbers. In sign value notation, uh, uh, the, 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 the position is not an essential information. So if you imagine a Roman number notation where there is no subtraction, only addition, then for example, 15 could be denoted as we do that X V or the other way around V X. So, because we are just adding them up. So the spatial information is not critical. And for this reason, one may say that because spatial information is, is critical in place value notation, but not in sign value notation, maybe place maybe the spatial information or, or spatial processing of, of, of these numbers could be critical or important. And I we had some counter arguments, which I don't entirely remember. Sorry. So, uh, so, so, question: if, if if you send send me an email, I will send you the uh, uh, the um, the manuscript where we have discussed this issue, and we had some argument, and I just can't recall it. You know what what what, what these were. Uh, one was that that e e even if if spatial information is not essential in a sign value notation, it is still used. So, you know, usually when sign value, like Roman numbers are written, uh, we always start with large powers and, and going to the direction of smaller powers. And for this reason, because although spatial information is not essential in the notation in itself, actually it is used and it, 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 it can be used. And, and, that is one reason why spatial information could also be useful in a sign value notation. And, uh, and, and that was something that whether there is a difference between place value and sign value notation in terms of spatial processing. Uh, yeah. On, on the, yeah. That's the only reason I, I was wondering, because I could see 
basically that kind of argument that they have to understand and understand the difference between left and right. And you're putting it on this side, not the other side. And then I thought, well, the Roman numerals also have them loaded up to, you know, in a certain position. And so I was imagining, say we did sign. And oh, sorry. put the the higher right of the reversing it. So anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I, but it's, it's, I will. I'm, I'm sorry, probably it's not just me who uh, have some issue with your connection. So I, I'm not all, I, I cannot hear you all the time. And uh, okay, no, no, no. Well, uh, maybe if, if you uh, can repeat uh, only the, the second part of your question, because I could hear the, the very first one. So Oh, just I was wondering how the test would work if you put the higher power value on the right instead of on the left and reverse it, the whole process, because with even with reading, you know, we're used to seeing things go in a certain direction. And I thought if it's just a spatial problem and it would might maybe apply to both that. Uh, yeah. The sign yeah. I, yeah, I, I agree that this could make sense. And um, and. Even if I, 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 I'm not sure if this could be essential, but I, I, I can easily imagine that this is part of the processing uh, uh, of numbers. And definitely in, in place of annotation, this is an essential information as well. So if someone cannot process the spatial information, then definitely they will have issue with place value notation, but not with sign value notation. So I, I agree with you that this could be important to check. And uh, in in our study, when we uh, when we co contrasted the two notations, we had some additional arguments, which I can't remember. You know why this is possibly not not critical, but on the other hand, it still can be used, and and I agree that this is something that should be should be checked empirically as well. For example, with that that design that you that you provided, like you know, uh, using different direction or something like that. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And I think and, that also has a question. Yeah. Probably Caroline is, is, is the next one. I think, Caroline, is that a legacy hand or? Yeah. And I, I asked my question. Oh, okay. I think it's left over somehow. <laughs> Maybe okay, lower okay, my hand. Sorry. Lower my hand. Sorry. Then uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> oh, okay. Guys for your interesting talk. I find it quite interesting to compare these two system of number, like the sign language and the place value. And I kind of thinking about the advantage of the place value number is that more digits always mean larger number. And for the sign, uh, sign value, so you can have 116. Uh, where that is one digit, and you can have three ones, that's three digits. So I wonder if you look at the subsets of comparison tests where the place value comparison is always like more digits compared to less digits. And then for the sign language, it can be the reverse, the incongruent ones. And would you expect a reverse advantage towards place value in that special cases? Yeah, th yeah th th this is a very important uh, detail as well, and we can see that one one uh, uh, critical or common mistake uh, participants make with the sign value notation that they are just counting or, or just considering the length of the string. So you know how many digits you can see. So for example, in in Roman notation, fifty could be smaller than three because it includes only a single digit versus three where, where you can see three uh, uh, digits. And uh, so first of all, this, this, is, uh, this is something that, uh, that participants mix up in a sign value notation. Obviously in a place value notation, this, this, this is a reasonable uh, decision thing. And, and because this, in, in place value notation, this, this is a reasonable uh, decision criteria to, to count the number of digits and only based on that you can decide uh about the, the, the comparison uh I'm, I'm pretty sure that that or at least it's, it's it's really probable that participants are using this uh 
I'm I can't remember if we have checked this. Probably not, because you know we we were checking so many things and it was already too many. And uh, uh, but but I, I I would I would think that that people are using this information and they can use it only in place value notation, but not in 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 uh, sign value notation. But another reason why we uh, at least in our in our previous paper, you know, published ten years ago, uh, we we didn't consider this because we were uh, using addition task as well, and in addition tasks, you cannot use this this information, or you know, this is not informative. This is very useful for comparison, but not for addition, and that's why we we didn't didn't check the the role of the length of the strings or or, or the number of the digits. But I, yeah, I, I agree with you that that uh, this should uh, have some role. Hey, thank you. Um, are there any more questions? Okay, if if not, then um, thank you, Attila, for your time and for the fantastic presentation, and thank you for. Uh, everyone for attending and uh we hope to see everyone again at next week's cn seminar thank Bye you everyone, everyone for your attention and the questions bye